All right, in this video, we're going to import the Verilog netlist that we created using Innovus in a previous video. To do so, I'm going to launch Cadence. You might see some warnings pop up as I launch Cadence on this environment. I'm actually running this on a high-speed uh, computing cluster, and Cadence doesn't like the operating system that this cluster uses, but that's okay, it still works. All right, I'm going to open the library manager, and now I'm going to go to File, Import, Verilog. I'm going to navigate to my Verilog file. I'm going to put this in a target library. And I'm going to provide it a few additional reference libraries. All right, the additional reference libraries I've provided are analog lib, SC9, uh, this is a, a standard cell library, and then I'm also going to add the TSMC library for this one. You can judge for yourself whether you want to overwrite existing views. In this case, I'm going to because I imported a test of this earlier to make sure that it worked. We're going to import schematic and functional views, and everything else should be set. Now, I added, I ran the add power .perl script uh, on this particular one. So uh, this is a structural netlist that has the power connections provided so that it's going to import those correctly. Uh, if you haven't done that yet, you should do that to your structural Verilog if you're uh, Innovus does not export the netlist with power included. All right. Now, to make this easier for next time, I'm going to save a configuration file. And we should be good to go. You can look at the log file. We see here that something failed. All right, so I discovered that my Verilog tools were still pointing to an old version of IUS uh, and also to Exilium, uh, and that was causing a conflict which caused the Verilog to fail. So I fixed that and I'm now rerunning things. All right, so you can see that the Verilog in is complete. You can look at the log file if you'd like. Uh, mostly this is just going to have info, maybe a few warnings, depending upon how the import went. Now, sometimes the schematics are imported cleanly, uh, but oftentimes there are a few errors that will have to be fixed. So here's our schematic. All right, well, we can do a check and save. And of course we get quite a few warnings. Now, most of these warnings that we're going to get, ideally, are just going to be solder dots. Uh, the way that the schematic imports things, it often leaves a dot at an intersection of four uh, wires, uh, and that is against convention, so it causes a warning. Uh, we do have a signal type mismatch uh, in our between our uh, schematic uh, and our symbol. Uh, you can see in the schematic import uh, it brought this, the symbol in as power, and in uh, the symbol, it's a signal. Uh, we can, of course, change that pretty easily. Perhaps the easiest way to change that in this particular case is to open up the symbol. We can look at the properties of the symbol. And we can change the property for VDB to 
power, save. And now that warning will be fixed. Now we can go through the list thoroughly to see if there are any other errors. I believe mostly this is just going to be solder dots. Uh, there are a few uh, floating pins or floating outputs uh, that just weren't connected as a result of the schematic not connecting them. Uh, and you'll notice also that there are several modules that were brought in. We'll have to fix each of the modules as well just to make sure that there are no errors inside of those uh, sub-modules. Uh, I'm not going to do that now. Uh, you can go through and, and make any uh, uh, corrections to your own personal netlist as you bring them in. Um, in, in my case, uh, I've already uh, gone through and uh, uh, gone ahead and done this. All right, so uh, that's it for this video. Now you can see that uh, the schematic import uh, is very difficult to read. You know, we could zoom in and see uh, the, the smaller cells. You can also see uh, how it handled the power Im uh, import uh, as well, uh, connecting those due to the uh, addpower.pl script that we ran. Um, but uh, really, the schematic isn't very exciting, just a bunch of uh, a, a massive jumble of wires. Uh, and uh, what is exciting, of course, is the functionality and the fact that this is going to be linked to a layout. And in the next video, I will import the GDS, uh, and then we will start the physical checks between the layout and the schematic. Namely, we'll run a DRC on the layout, and then we'll run a, a uh, LVS, which is layout versus schematic, uh, that will compare the layout to the schematic. We'll do that in the next video.